it's been about 20 hours since I saw this movie and I still can't stop thinking about it. Like I went to bed and I woke up still in my feelings. So I had something else planned today. I was going to do an ARC review, which I will do soon, but my mom and my sister texted me yesterday like, hey, we're gonna go watch Queen and Slim. And I was like, okay. I heard nothing but good things about it. And I went to the theater and I'm usually kind of a snob about movies. So I don't go to the movies a lot until I know like it's going to be good. But this, I haven't seen a movie this good in a long time. I bawled my eyes out. I cried three times during the movie and I just, I cannot remember the last time I watched a movie this good, this visually stunning, and which made me continue to think about it for hours and hours and into the next day. And even now I can't stop thinking about it. So here's a video about it. <laughs> So obviously there will be no spoilers because I want you to go out and watch it for yourself. But the first thing I want to talk about is the two leads, our leads, Queen and Slim. And I think it's easy, you know, when you look at the trailer, it's easy to think, oh, this is just going to be a black Bonnie and Clyde. But after the movie, my sister, uh, she was talking about some other, like, some tweets or whatever she read about it. And someone had said, don't call it the Black Bonnie and Clyde, because Bonnie and Clyde were, you know, they were criminals. They committed crime after crime after crime. Queen and Slim were just being Black. So, this is not a story of a Black couple driving across the country and committing crimes. This is a slow burn romance. I'm, ch I'm using my words, I'm choosing my words <laughs> carefully because I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to use too many adjectives, but I will say it is slow burn and it is a movie ultimately about black love. And this, and this is a sort of representation that we don't see often at all. We sometimes get movies that scratch the surface. We sometimes get movies that, it, you know, they get maybe a little close, but we can't talk about black love without talking about how the black woman is represented. And Queen's representation, the way she is written, really resonated with me because as black women, we get stuck with the very, very harmful, strong black woman stereotype um, because of the way we were treated throughout history ever since we were forced to be here. It's also important to note that both of our leads are dark skinned. Addressing colorism in Hollywood is an ongoing struggle and the fact that both of these leads are beautiful like they are their skin is like ethereal and it's radiant and it's lit by expert lighting the cinematographer did them justice and you have a dark-skinned black woman being loved and desired on screen i read an article about this and you can read about it in the comments below. I think it's called something, not comments, in the description below. I think it's called something like, what Queen and Slim gets right about black women. There's also this uh, part where Queen says, I'm an excellent lawyer. And then Slim says, why do black people always have to be excellent? Why can't we just be ourselves? And that was a real ass statement. <laughs> people, Non-black people think so little of us that we place extra pressure on ourselves 
to be excellent, to be better. We have to be better than non-black people, to be seen as equal to non-black people. And that is a whole discussion in and of itself. And the last thing I wanna talk about is police brutality, the protests, how this whole Black Lives Matter movement manifests differently in the black community because we don't always think the same things. Um, so if you've seen the trailer, then you know that Queen and Slim are in trouble with the law. They, there's this altercation that happens at the beginning of the movie with a police officer, a very racist and trigger happy police officer. Um, and that's the catalyst that sparks the rest of the journey. They encounter people who are like, yeah, I totally agree with what you did. And you encounter people who are like, that wasn't a good look. And you, and the, the movie also addresses how all of this is affecting black youth. This is important. <laughs> it's, my mom said at the end of the movie, you can't always show the good, you know, you have to show. She said, the crookeds with the straights. <laughs> so while this whole movement is something that is needed, at the end of the day, the black community is very angry and frustrated in general. And when you mix that with teenage hormones, um, when you mix that with like angry youth, it can lead to some hasty and poor decision making. And we don't want to see things like that, but it's something that needs to be discussed. Um, and the way the movie addresses that point specifically is very poignant and heartbreaking. It's like how I felt after reading Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. It's such a poignant book <laughs> written decades ago. It's a great American 50s novel about the black condition and how poignant it is and how relevant it still is to today's society. It's due for a reread, but I don't know when I'll be emotionally ready to reread it. But that's how I feel about Queen and Slim. Like part of me is just like, I can never watch this movie again. <laughs> Another part of me is like, I have to watch this again at some point. It's too beautiful not to. But my heart was raw after watching it. And so I need to heal first. Part of the reason I feel like I need to heal a little bit more before I see this, is, see this again, is because I don't know if you've seen, you know, these articles or studies that talk about how seeing news articles about, you know, police gunning down black people and then getting away with it, that results in PTSD symptoms in members of the black community. So when I when I saw that first police altercation at the beginning of the movie, like my heart started racing and there were tears streaming down my face. Like if I were the only one in the room, I would have just been all out bawling because stuff like that stresses me out so much. <laughs> like when it happens in real life, I just, I, I read the article and I end up crying like I actually knew that person. So I need to find a way to cope with these emotions and these symptoms before I can go back in and watch the movie. <laughs> but I'm glad I did. Easily the best movie I've seen in a long, long time and I highly recommend it. Please watch it. Please watch it. It deserves far, far more attention than it's getting. There's not another movie I can think of that I feel this strongly about right now.
I'm just thinking of the scene where they're dancing to the live band and the scene where like they're in two different they're in two separate rooms and they're lit differently and cutting back and forth is just the lighting and the colors are gorgeous just do yourself a favor and watch it <laughs> anyway that's all I have to say well that's not all I have to say by a long shot but that's all I will say in this video <laughs> I'm not trying to make it like super long so Thank you for watching. Likes and subscribes help me out quite a lot. Shout out to LCT Comics and Cassie and Holly, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Moon and